When you are asked to factorize an expression, you must make sure that all of your factors in your expression, once you've finished factorizing, are prime factors. And what that means is that they are not able to be factorized anymore, that their only factors are then one and themselves. So, for example, just a simple numeric example, if I asked you to write down the factors of 12, and you factorize it and you said that it was 6 times 2, you're not incorrect. You're simply not finished, though, because 6 is not a prime number. 6 has got factors of its own. So you can actually write 12 as 3 times 2, which gives you the 6, times another 2, which gives you the 12. So just make very sure that all of your factors are fully factorized when you before you finish a sum. And when you are given a factorizing sum in a test or exam, it's often difficult to figure out what kind of factorizing they want you to do. Must you take out a common factor? Is it the difference of two squares? What is it that they want you to do? So some steps that you can follow are like a little process. And if you'd like to pause the video once I've written these down to make some notes, you're very welcome to. So the first thing that we always do when we factorize an expression is we always look for a common factor. Okay, so always look to see if there's a common factor. And remember that if there are four or more terms, that that means that you might need to do some grouping. So we've really looked at grouping in the previous video. Okay. And then secondly, if there wasn't a common factor or you've taken it out, so you must just check your remaining factors. So check your factors and look to see. Are any of them the difference of two squares? Are any of them a trinomial? Could you factorize them using a trinomial? And then something we haven't looked at yet, but we're going to do in the next video, is something called the sum and difference of cubes. Okay, so if you follow that and you go through that little process, it can just help you to figure out where you need to go. So if we look at number one, <coughs> this expression consists of three terms, and there is a common factor. The common factor is x. If we take x out, we get left with x squared plus 5x plus 6. This factor here of x is prime. The only factors of x are x times 1, so it's a prime number. But this factor here is a quadratic trinomial. So we would be able to factorize that into the product of two binomials, so x and x. And then the factors of positive 6 that add up to positive 5 are positive 3 and positive 2. Now that factor, x plus 3, is fully factorized. There's no further factorizing to do there. And the same with x plus 2. So we are in fact finished. All right, in number 2, we have um, a common factor of both a negative 2 and a y. The reason I'm going to take out the negative 2 is that I know that 18 divided by 2 is 9. And that if I take out a negative, it will change the sign in the middle to a negative, And it could give me the difference of squares. Minus and 9 is a perfect square. So let's just see where it goes. Take out, sorry, negative 2y as a common factor. That leaves you with y squared minus 9. And indeed, there is those difference of two squares, which factorizes into a sum and difference product. Everything there is now fully factorized. In your homework book, there are two examples for you to try, so please pause the video and try those. Okay, in number one, we have a common factor of x minus 1. x minus 1 is a common factor. It's a common binomial to all the terms. There are three terms in this expression. So we take x minus 1 out as the common factor. And in actual fact, I haven't taken out the full common factor yet because there's also a common factor of 2. 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 2, and 2 goes into 12. So my highest common factor is 2 and the x minus 1. That leaves me here with an a squared, a negative a, and negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. That a squared minus a minus 6 is a, I beg your pardon, that should be an x a squared minus a minus 6 is a trinomial. It will factorize into two binomials. The factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 1 are negative 3 and positive 2. And nothing there can be factorized any further. In number 2, always look for a common factor first. This one is a tricky one because it looks like it's difference of two squares. 36y squared is a perfect square and 4 is a perfect square. But in actual fact, 4 is a common factor here, 
that leaves you with 9y squared uh, minus 1. 9y squared minus 1. And that is the difference of two squares. So it will factorize into 3y plus 1 and 3y minus 1.